Welcome friends, welcome back to Cocktails After Dark. Uh, today we're going to do a cocktail called the Dirty Tequila, or I think it's called the Dirty Tequila. I'm not terribly sure. Um, like most Canadians, Jules and I will go on a winter vacation. We'll go down south to the Caribbean somewhere. Last couple of winters, we've gone to Mexico. Um, and so for a winter vacation, we'll just go to an all-inclusive resort. And the last couple of winters, we've gone down to a place where the bar, um, they don't sell the drinks because it's all-inclusive. So you, you roll up to the bar, you ask for a dirty tequila, and this is generally what they pour for you. Although, um, the place that we go to has, uh, has four or five different bars in different parts of the property, and you go up to each bar, and each bartender makes it differently. Some of them shake it, some of them stir it, um, but it always is handed to you in a plastic cup, um, which kind of takes some of the magic away from it, except, you know, you're by the beach or you're by the pool and you're in Mexico. So it is tequila, dry vermouth, and orange bitters. It's really not a complicated drink at all. So give a stir. And now there is a garnish for this, and that is a pickled jalapeno pepper. The dirty tequila. Straight up, simple, easy cocktail. Not much to it at all. Uh, something that these guys at the bar at the pool just slammed out like you wouldn't believe. Um, I'm amazed how much alcohol they go through at a pool bar at a resort in Mexico, or anywhere in the Caribbean for that fact. Now, Jules and I did have a few of these while we were there. And we did try them with a bunch of different tequilas, and some tequilas that um, we'd never heard of that, you know, just aren't for sale where we live. And the tequila, of course, because there's not too many ingredients, it makes a huge difference in what this tastes like. And just, just on the nose, um, between these two, completely different. I mean, this one I'm getting almost a caramel scent on the nose. So, I'm going to try the Cazadores first. Yeah, I mean, it's not as great as it is in Mexico. I mean, there's no beach, there's no pool. It's minus 20 outside and it's snowing. Um, that could be coloring my perception of what's going on here, but it's still a great cocktail. And this one, I don't know where that caramel nose is coming from. Very nice. Okay. Now, I mean, the color is more. There is more caramel color here. This has spent more time in the barrel. It's gotten more from the barrel. But on the nose, there isn't a whole lot of caramel. There isn't enough caramel in that to create that much of a caramel nose in the cocktail. So this tequila is mixing with the other components and really bringing that, that caramel nose out. There's no flavor, though, of caramel. I'm going to say uh, I'm going to say the Casamigos wins this one. Uh, the whole flavor profile, it's a little bit brighter, a little bit wider. There's more going on there. There's more layers in this combination than the Cazadores. And this is, uh, this is a tequila that I kind of really like. So I'm surprised, but you know, if you put that down in front of me, I'm gonna enjoy it. I would enjoy it. Something I might try a little bit differently is, um, is muddling the pickled jalapeno. Or maybe just... Uh, let's just put a little bit of Just 
just spoon a little extra jalapeno juice in there and see what that does to the cocktail. Because, I mean, you know, we're playing around, we're experimenting. Oh, that's the wrong spoon. Completely the wrong spoon. There we go. So, okay. Yes. Jalapeno pickle juice changes it once again. A little bit of extra. With the jalapeno pickle juice, it is now the Casadores that wins. Um, Casamigos is a close second though. It doesn't take much to, uh, to completely change a cocktail at all. So, have you ever had this? Um, and if you're going to Mexico this winter, uh, give this a try. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.